वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल एड्रेस एडवाइजर्स अ बिग थैंक यू टू ऑल आर सब्सक्राइबर्स एंड व्यूअर्स हु हैव गिवन अ वेरी गुड फीडबैक इन रिस्पांस टू आवर वीडियोस वी आर वेरी हैप्पी टू नो लाइक इट हैज हेल्प्ड मेनी ऑफ आवर व्यूअर्स एंड क्लाइंट्स इन मेकिंग रियल स्टेट डिसीजंस वी हैव गॉट सम वेरी गुड क्वेश्चंस एंड वेरी डिटेल्ड क्वेश्चंस ऑन मार्केट्स ऑन प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑन परचेज डिसीजंस वी ट्राइड आवर लेवल बेस्ट टू आंसर ऑल ऑफ देम इन आवर YouTube चैनल वी होप इट वाज वेरी यूजफुल and we definitely are open to answer any of the questions on any of the markets developers projects we will be very happy to answer all your queries so today we would like to probably put a structure and system in place where you know we would like to cover our uh, thought process in three different sections so let's say we can we'll cover first section or first portion where we will talk about what is happening like what's happening in real estate or what are the action items happening what are the key trends which are happening what developers are saying what customers are saying so we will try and talk about what is happening right now second we will try and cover why this is happening so probably we'll touch upon the data points and we'll try and explain the rationale or reason behind why it is happening uh, which will also uh, probably enable us to understand and sync with the kind of action and uh, demand and supply which is happening in the market towards the end in the third section we'll just try and analyze both section 1 and section 2 and we'll try and uh, see what we can anticipate or expect from uh, say in next 2 to 3 years or 4 years in real estate in bangalore so probably we'll start from what is happening we'll try and explain why it is happening and then we'll also see what next so what are the takeaway points from our discussions like any other sector you know this is the time when lot of launches happens lot of new product come into the market lot of offers are there so this is the time which is good for overall industry and overall sector uh, we are also getting lot of feedback lot of action we have seen in last two months good amount of sales good amount of action at customer level at developers level at stakeholder levels so one interesting thing which we saw was you know uh, first time probably uh, in in indian real estate market or probably in bangalore specifically uh, good developers good developers who have built their brand they have established their self as the top notch developers with the quality and product and deliverables they launched some really good projects in different micro markets of bangalore right from north to east to south and one thing which came out very clear was they were able to win the confidence of customers so they were able to sell those project very fast you must have heard you know a probably sale in let's say one day or 36 hours 48 hours launch sale sale in one week uh, sale in probably a month so the entire inventory got sold off like anything that too also like without actually uh, playing or uh, around the prices so the products were sold more or less at the price which it was launched and this is this is the sign which shows the maturity of the market uh, people have confidence in developers so the real estate is no more a sector where you know people have doubts on developers or credibility or deliverables Uh, there were a lot of issues in earlier times where you know uh, people had a lot of doubts on developers in terms of whether they'll come in complete the project or not whether they will be able to deliver what they promised uh, whether they'll be able to do within the time frames so that was these were the major concerns but uh, thankfully after rera and uh, after almost 6 years of reva now they are clear segregation so a lot of uh, developers who have demonstrated successful completion and delivery of projects and on time and with good quality they have built a brand and they are the developers who are able to sell very fast there is a huge amount of demand for those kind of developers and product so you must have read in newspapers or in in social media you know projects large projects upwards of like 500 1000 units 2000 units getting sold like anything in and, and good price in fact we also did a lot of launch uh, sales in those projects and we were part of a lot of closures with the clients but one thing which we realized was this time particularly the demand was much more and much faster and much more uh, vigorous than it was earlier so demand was there for people to buy unit at the price of the launch at the configuration what developers is selling and this is something which is new for bangalore we have not seen this kind of uh, action this kind of fast selling in bangalore earlier this is really new and this is encouraging for the sector uh, this shows the confidence at the customer level it shows the confidence in the builder and in the sector as well having said then you know we we also got a lot of clients who for whatever reason were unable to book 
or pick the units they were looking at maybe you know the, the, there was a issue in terms of the location or the the unit they were getting or whatever ability availability was there these are the people who came back to us and they were really you know uh, having a lot of questions about why this is happening it has never happened in bangalore and it's not happened in real estate market in india why these things are happening are they real their question was is it real like you know the people developers are selling in like one day two day five day one week one month is it real or it is like a hype it's a very good question and uh, definitely you know uh, different people will have different perspective and views uh we did some fact finding and of course you know if you look at good developers the top notch developers they are definitely able to sell uh at the prices they've launched so the one thing which these customers came back to us and asked you know why this is happening what is the change which has happened that's a that's an interesting thing to ponder on you know why why suddenly you know what has happened suddenly how come so many people are coming to buy and i i can tell you i have seen real estate market for last 10 to 12 years i'm not seen the kind of interest buyers have to purchase which was there in last couple of months this particular year in bangalore people were coming and booking like anything like you know uh, and on the other hand from the developer side they also had lot of challenges because there's so much demand uh, it's not possible to you know meet the expectation of every client so of course you know they were forced to not to uh, give units which were the customers were asking because of course you know uh, there are certain kind of units in each project which are preferred units and there are certain units which are normal units every customer wants the preferred units but then it's not possible whether it's from vastu perspective or from height perspective or from floor perspective or configuration perspective of course so they they have to cut a sorry figure and lot of customers came back and say oh he is just bluffing and they they are units available he is not releasing it he is not selling it uh their concerns are valid and of course you know they will feel like that because they came with the check to book the unit but they didn't get the allotment or they didn't get the chance to book the unit uh, it's a very valid concern they have uh, we tried our best to you know uh, get them options in the same project or in some cases we were able to get them probably units in other projects which were equally good uh, so but still you know it's a valid question so w- what is the reason for this thing which is like fast sale Uh, no compromise on price no negotiation on price we have seen uh, in many launches there was no negotiation of pricing whatever is the price is is the final price which is very unique again you know because normally in in past you know a lot of developer used to give some amount of benefit uh, financial benefit whether in terms of money or in terms of freebies or in terms of giving like you know some uh, interiors fit out along with the unit or some discount in terms of money but this time it it was no like you know it it was not at all uh, in fact to it was also difficult to get maybe extra car park as well so in some cases a lot of people were asking for extra car park and it was not available because of course you know nowadays people ask everyone even a 2 bhk person will ask for a two car park or a three car park or a three bedroom person will ask for a three or four car park so uh, the things have changed a lot we met all these customers a lot of customers uh in fact approaches directly and said you know what is the reason is there any thing which we foresee it will happen in future which will change it so when we we look back you know th- th- there were some data points which were very relevant so the thing which came in front was why it is happening in bangalore now so the timing and the city and the place is critical so i would like to cover and explain you know and and try and put some data points in terms of what we feel you know why this thing is happening in bangalore why suddenly there is so much demand and so much uh, sales are happening so now coming to the next section of why so if you look at bangalore almost 15 lakh uh, people are working in technical field or engineering field or software field uh, which is a large number it is almost one third of the total uh, people working in technology field in india so one third of technology man force is in bangalore that's a big number you know uh, one city catering to one third of the uh men par in tech field they are they are numbers available in public domain which we can say with with the confidence ki 80% of the top it companies have some presence in bangalore it's all there you know you name it all the companies will have some good presence in bangalore they they are investments which are coming to bangalore bangalore is getting the highest number of investments in startups bangalore is also become a startup capital if you look at the kind of companies which are getting registered as per lot of expert data from 2016 onwards 40% of the companies which were registered were registered in bangalore it is much more than delhi and mumbai put together 
so that, that shows the kind of confidence across sectors have shown in bangalore as a city as a brand so bangalore has attracted a large amount of talent pool from all over india if you look at the the talent availability i know almost more than 90 to 95000 engineering graduates graduate from various colleges in bangalore alone this is a big number you know it it supports the the infrastructure in terms of availability of manpower for it companies it's a big number to support the industry and you have good quality colleges like really good quality colleges and people who are coming from those colleges are getting really good uh, placements and they are getting really good jobs and they are doing extremely good in the sector so that that boosts the the that pushes the bangalore to the next level it has established itself as not only a silicon valley but also a startup capital most of the companies who are actually uh, going to unicorn status the largest number is from bangalore it is also enabled the the amount of money or funds available with the people working in tech field or in uh, technology sector in bangalore so that they can invest they can fulfill their aspirations uh, if you notice you know there is a large amount of people who are not from karnataka have uh, moved to or shifted to karnataka from various part of india to work in this field and of course they they don't have any homes here so they will be the prospective buyers and with the kind of money which they are getting of course you know they are capable and they are the ones who are buying homes so if you look at the kind of sales which are happening in real estate in bangalore these are the people who are ready to put that money to buy real estate in these uh, locations which are closer to it park so the reason one of the reason was the large amount of uh, influx which is happening so from let's say 35 to 36 lakh to 1.35 crores you can see around 22 to 23 years almost more than 1 crore people have migrated to bangalore so on an average if you look at the data population data every year around 3 3.5 lakh people come to bangalore which is a good number it is also actually uh, you know if you look at the kind of correlation between the population influx and the office absorption every year bangalore is witnessing around uh, 10 to 12 or 13 million square feet of new office space absorption which of course is mostly into it so it if you look at every 100 square feet is one person so you can safely say every year almost 100000 or 110000 people are actually joining it workforce which is directly then for every single job created in it sector there is a multiple of around 2 or 2.2 uh, for allied services or support services so if you put the math together of course you know around more than 300000 or 350000 people are coming to bangalore every year and those are the people who will be actually looking for real estate whether they buy or they take on rent you know someone will buy and give it to them on rent so demand is there so that kind of demand is consistently coming but if you look at the supply data you know of course there was a lot of inventory which was already there but then in terms of the supply coming to market in last let's say 5 7 years or 8 years probably 55 60 000 units are getting launched and absorbed every year so the supply is restricted like it has not crossed that number for long it even every year it is around 50 to 55 000 units getting launched and getting absorbed every year so there is a good amount of demand which is there which is growing much faster than the supply on an average we have seen a hike of around 15 to 20% across good micro markets when i say good micro market they are the micro markets where you have most of the it companies situated so uh, if you put together these numbers and if you put together these data uh, we'll see you know why there was so much rush and there is so much demand to buy these projects why these projects were sold very fast at the same time there are a lot of other developers who are doing standard sales and they are doing decent work and their sales are organically happening the way it used to happen earlier so of course they are selling around 25 30% during the launch 35 40% during the sustenance and around 15 20% towards the end when the property is ready and when the pricing is really high so they would like to maximize the return and investment uh, at that time when the property is ready so th- those things are also happening but you know j- just to put the data together of course that was the reason why this one day sale 24 hour sale 36 hour sales were happening i will not like to say i mean uh, if all developers are achieving that number but a good amount of developers and good amount of projects are getting there where they are able to sell fast i will not like to say one day two day one month but they are selling very fast at the pace which they have planned for so these are the things which are happening in the market so that kind of explain what the problem was in the beginning like why 
uh, there was a great amount of demand which was happening. I would like to also highlight the way the marketing of these projects are happening. Uh, marketing is very important and of course not only real estate but for any sector and any segment. So the way marketing is happening is also playing a crucial role. Uh, you know, uh, it is true like, you know, if you demonstrate delivery, if you demonstrate quality, if you demonstrate price and then if you get the confidence of customers, then of course, you know, getting the sales or getting the business is not a difficult task. It's not very easy, but it's, it makes the things very simple. The process is very simple. So the marketing also talks about what to agree, what not to agree, what to do, what not to do. So the way probably I would like to see these projects which were successful, were successful because they were marketed as if this is the pricing, this is the unit and it's a standard unit and standard pricing, no compromise. So it is also you can say some level where you know the developers or development companies have put their foot down and said this is the pricing, uh, not in a negative way. But of course, you know, uh, this is what to say, you know, this is the product and this is our premium and this is what we command and uh, we'll be happy to sell you, but at this price and this configuration. So that also reinforces, it works like a lot of customers came back to us and say, oh, that project and that developer, he's not giving me inventory, he's not giving me that, he's, he told me to wait, he's taken my uh, check, but he's saying, I'll let you know in some time if any cancellation happens or not. People are giving checks, they are giving that confidence, but they are also concerned about whether it is true or not. So in many cases, of course, they, they got allotment, uh, but in many cases, they got the money back. So it is like the way developers are marketing also plays a crucial role. In today's time, if with social media and with word of mouth, things spread like fire, they, they spread very fast. So it's not very difficult for people to get information on how a project is performing, how developers are responding, how flexible or fixed his pricing is. So if you put the marketing on pricing and marketing on the products correct, then these kind of demand will be generated or you, I can say it can be created and this kind of traction will be there. So the, we have seen a huge amount of change in the kind of marketing strategies which is happening in real estate in Bangalore. So now moving to the next and last section, what's there in the future? You know, what's the future outlook? It's a tough question. Um, of course, no one can predict future and no one can say anything about future in terms of what will happen. But with the kind of growth which we are seeing, the kind of traction we have seen, uh, if you look at again, I mean, go back to data. I mean, uh, like I mentioned, Bangalore is today at on 1.36 crore population. As per various estimates and data, I mean, it will be somewhere close to 1.8 crores by 2033-34. So you can say in next 10 to 12 years, Bangalore will see an additional influx of population of around 50 lakhs. So when I say influx of 50 lakh, which can be if you take average family size of four uh, or maybe in, uh, you know nowadays people are actually having one kid. So it depends, you know, I'm just taking assumption. If you take an average family size of four, it will be a demand for around another 10 to uh, 12 lakhs of homes because assuming one family will take one home. Uh, I'm not counting people where people invest in multiple homes and all that. So there will be a demand for around 10 to 12 lakh homes in next 10 years. Average, you can say we will need at least 1 lakh homes every year for next 10 years just to cater the demand which is projected. And again, you know, the demand can go up also because always we have seen uh, most of the cases if the cities created that kind of buzz and it created a brand we have seen the population grows much more than the forecast of the projections. So just at the base level, if we need to cater to the demand which will be organically coming in Bangalore for next 10 years, we have to build 1 lakh homes in Bangalore. Now, a lot of developers who are sitting on the data, they know, they know the pulse of the market. They have already uh, started acquiring land banks in different part of city and they will plan these projects down the line in 3, 5, 6 years. So the demand will be there. So going forward, I don't see uh, any uh, trouble in terms of demand from residential sector unless you know the supply uh, is created to the level where it pushes some demand. But uh, I mean for that to happen, there is a huge amount of uh, development which has to be done. Going by the record for last 5-7 years, I don't think it will be easy. But of course that's the way a lot of developers are planning. So the supply has to catch up because demand will come. 
so i can safely say i i don't want to go long term but i can safely say for next at least 3 to 5 years going by the trend and going by the business plans of lot of software companies and companies who are planning for next 3 to 5 years the growth which they have envision in for their own businesses i can safely say there will be good amount of demand and this kind of traction will continue unless you know something happens which is beyond anyone's uh, imagination or anyone's calculations uh, we can say based on the data again there will be demand going forward so i expect the real estate sector to go in a more more organized and structured way where there will be definitely more transparency and much more uh, price realization but at the same time the demand will go on increasing so it will strengthen the city it will get bangalore to a level where it will be competing with all the top global cities and of course you know there is a good amount of learning happening from top cities uh, if you look at the way you know global cities have evolved uh, based on sudden spurge in economic activities whether it's it or pharma or trading uh, the way you know pro, for example singapore has established itself or hong kong established or new york or top cities they there is a good amount of learning happening from those cities so as i mentioned a large influx is happening from migratory populations and those are the people who are not from bangalore but they are coming from different part of india and for them the requirement is also like they they don't want to park because they don't know whether they'll be in city for next 10 years so uh, i i would like to just share one example like we we were talking to one client again they are not from bangalore and they they are planning to buy a real estate they had one kid and they said that they are planning another kid and they would like to buy a 4 bhk uh, so that they are sorted for next 7 uh, 8 years because they will it will take care of their need for a family of two adult and two kids for at least uh, next 7 8 years but then uh, you know the different ways you know uh, we don't know so i i advise them maybe to not to buy a 4 bhk now but maybe if the money is there the quantum of the money is there available probably split it and buy a three bedroom now and park the additional money in a smaller unit or a plot or a investment so if you put all the money in one unit you know of course it will grow at one pace but if you split and buy two unit uh, of course the the growth will be much higher for a small units so if you look at that kind of demand which is coming catering to that demand the product also have changed Uh, earlier in bangalore we used to have only large three bedrooms upwards of 2000 2100 square feet uh, two bedrooms were in upwards of 1200 to 1400 square feet but now if you look at the kind of products which are planned these products are like you know maybe 900 to 1000 square feet two bedroom and probably 1100 to 1500 square feet three bedroom so you have all kind of sizes available and these are learnings which probably you know the sectors is taken from global cities where you know probably you'll go to any top established cities they will have real estate catering to outside people or migratory people with the smaller sizes but the good price points so the sizes will reduce and will give flexibility to the customers to plan for uh, multiple units so they can invest in two bedroom or three bedroom now and as and when the family is growing or their needs are growing they can pick a four bedroom or a five bedroom in three to five years so the learning is also there in product level so if you look at you know probably the city is also evolving we have seen new kind of products which have come uh the compact homes are also there at the same time we have also seen a return of luxury segment so you see a lot of demand coming from ultra luxury segments also they are projects which are planned where a three bedroom is upwards of 2500 square feet so you have three bedrooms in a smart category 1200 1300 square feet also and luxury segment 25 to 2800 square feet also so there there is a demand which is happening across categories so you know there is a clear cut smart home category where you know a three bedroom will be around 1100 to 1300 or 1400 square feet and a luxury segment where the three bedroom will be around 2500 to 2800 square feet so the product uh, is coming and it's evolving in bangalore based on the customer demand of course the sector is learning uh, the best things from across the cities so uh, looking at the scenario and the, looking at all the possible data points what we had uh, i think i can safely say you know there is a good amount of prospect and potential in all category of real estate Uh, but specifically uh, smart housing upwards of let's say up to 1 1 and 1/2 crores and on the other hand luxury segment which is upwards of 5 crores so there is a good amount of demand which is happening um, of course it's a festive season and, you know everyone will be happy and in a joy mode i wish you and your family a very happy and prosperous festive season uh, thank you and all the best